This is Dan of Vagabond Buddha. This is my free Marrakesh, Morocco walking tour video and map. There is an interactive Google map for this walking tour. Just click the link in the notes below this YouTube video on your smartphone. At that link, you'll also find best area to stay, nightlife, facts and history, tourist scams in Marrakesh, a link to the best travel or retire cheap in paradise locations in the world, Plus, how to make money using your laptop while you travel around the world. Okay, back to our walking tour. So this is the YSL Yves Saint Laurent Museum in Marrakesh, Morocco. Let's see if Chen Hui wants to go inside or not. This is the entryway to the YSL Museum. Very dramatic, of course. Uh, Leila, Aloui, uh, 1982 to 2016, a Franco-Moroccan photographer and video artist died of her wounds sustained in a terrorist attack in a city I won't try to pronounce in 2016 while she was preparing a photo essay for Amnesty International. Her work at once humanist and committed to social justice has been published and exhibited worldwide. She is, her work's being on display here in the YSL Museum and we're going to check it out. This is her work and uh, their portraits. Here. As the saying goes, the work says as much about the photographer as how a person presents themselves when they know they're being photographed. And you see no smiles, very few. Very serious. Life is a serious thing. Here we see some more smile. Welcome to uh, Marrakesh, Morocco. This museum we're in right now is dedicated to the life work of Yves Saint Laurent, the designer. Um, he was um, known for many things, including the rise of couture from the hippie fashions of the 60s. His goal was to make women look comfortable yet elegant at the same time. He created the female tuxedo and was the first in high fashion to use non-white models. The entry fee is 100 local money, which is about 10 euros. Open seven days a week, 10 a.m. to 4.30. You have to visit this area, which is some call New Marrakesh. The co-chair itself we are unable to film, so we're just showing you a lobby area. The presentation of YSL's work is spectacular. This was the only picture that I could get here. Jacques Majorel um, was a French painter who remains most well known for this uh, villa and garden where I'm standing. He built a cubist villa behind me and celebrated garden over about a 40 year lifespan. After his death, the estate fell into disrepair and was purchased by YSL. Um, and restored, along with a uh, collection of uh, Majorelle's paintings uh, in the 1980s, uh, YSL purchased and put on display here. YSL's ashes are scattered here. This is the Cubist Villa that the, the painter built. It's all been restored by YSL. Now it's a museum. It's a very beautiful place. One of the most famous tourist attractions, and there's a package you can get for the YSL Museum and this uh, Cubist Villa and Gardens uh, for 180. And there's also a couple other uh, artist displays here, which is about $18 per person. If you're enjoying this video or getting some value here, could you please like the video, uh, comment below, subscribe, or share on. Uh, social media. Any of those things would help us grow our business. Thank you so much in advance.
to my right is the Ben Youssef Madrasa. It was uh, rebuilt in 1574. The original madrasa was built uh, by Ali bin Youssef in the 12th century. It was an Islamic law school, college, that also taught literature, science, and history. It was chosen or closed in 1980 and reopened in, uh, uh, as a historical center about a decade ago. It remains one of the most important historical buildings in Morocco and one of the biggest uh, tourist attractions here in America. Unfortunately, the madrasa is uh, closed right now to be renovated. So as you can see, these are just posters of the inside. So this is the souk in Marrakesh. The word souk uh, means market and uh, means marketplace in Western Asia and North Africa. Uh, the souk in Mar Marrakesh uh, covers a large area, but if you go uh, from the Ben Youssef Madrasa to Gemma El Fina in each, in either direction, uh, the above Google map will take you through my favorite part of uh, my favorite path through the souk. So just click the link and start walking. So this is Gemma El Fina Square. This is the main square of Marrakesh. Um, they've got all these juices and nuts and stuff during the day. And uh, there are snake charmers and storytellers, fortune tellers, artists, souvenirs, um, juice sellers and, and pickpockets. At night, all of that remains in this area right now we're facing. But plus a bunch of temporary restaurants pop up. There are always persuasive tour guides um, and fake designer goods for sale around here. This is the big square here. Right where I'm standing right now are the pop-up restaurants at night. The juice sellers are 24-7 that we're looking at them now. These stores and shops are all here all the time. And um, in the day, you have some fortune tellers and snake charmers and that kind of thing. That, that's the fortune teller in front of us right now under an umbrella. There's many of them, she just won. I don't see any snakes right now. There's not only snakes around here. Oh, there's some snake charmers right there. See the snakes on the ground? If I get too close, they're gonna try to charge me money, so I'm not gonna do it. So this is the Kotubi Mosque, the largest mosque in Marrakesh. 
was completed by the Berber uh, Almohad, Yaqib al-Mansur, in the 12th century. It has inspired other buildings such as the Giralda of Seville and the Hassan Tower of Rabat. The mosque has a large plaza with gardens and the minaret is 77 meters high. Make sure to get a photo at sunset. The desert skies make the best photos. Saudian tombs when we see this minaret of a mosque there and the entryway is in the back here behind the mosque. Just a little door down here. Seven dirha, whatever they're called, which is about seven euros. The Saudian dynasty tombs originated during the Saudian dynasty under Sultan Ahmad. El Mansur, 1578 to 1603. Uh, the tombs were rediscovered in 1917 and subsequently renovated because of their striking beauty. They've remained a favorite here for tourists and locals. So this is the Badi Palace. The Badi Palace is a ruined uh, palace located in Marrakesh, Morocco. It was commissioned by the Sultan Ahmad El Mansur of the Saudian dynasty. Uh, sometime shortly after the accession of 1578. The palace's construction was funded by substantially by ransom paid by the Portuguese after the Battle of the Three Kings. It's modeled after the Alhambra in Spain, if you've seen that. And, um, but it's in ruins, so I can't really compare to that today. I don't know if you can hear that clicking noise, but those are birds up there. See them up there on the ledge? And that's some kind of dance, I would suspect. And they're nesting up there. Anyway, I don't know the bird. Can't help you. I'll have to look it up. It would have been nice to see this thing before it went into ruins. I guess that's the beauty of Alhambra. 
Let's see what this was supposed to look like. This is the entrance to the Bahia Palace. So we're inside the Bahia Palace. The Bahia Palace is a palace and a set of gardens located in Marrakesh, Morocco. It was built in the late 19th century. Uh, intended to be the greatest palace of its time. The name means, Bahia means brilliance. The palace was built by Simosa in the 19th century and named after his favorite wife. His son, Bo Ahmed, who expanded the palace, was effectively the true ruler of Morocco because the sultan he served as Grand Vizier was just a teenager. And so he had considerable considerable power and this was his home there's about 10 rooms that are this extravagant so it's it's a big place You can see the intricacy of the work here. This is where he kept his concubines here. Hey, thanks for listening to our Marrakesh free walking tour uh, video. Remember there's an interactive Google Maps tour. Just click the link below this YouTube video to get started on your tour. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.